we've been preaching through the um, miracles in the epistles, and today will be the conclusion of that series. And then we start a new series next Sunday morning on the book of Jude and the church. And that is a, that is a very important book as we approach the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and talk about the church. So we'll begin with that next Sunday morning. Excited about it. Praise the Lord. And um, we're going to, how many ready for another miracle from the epistles? Amen. Let's stand for the read of God's word. First Peter, first Peter chapter one. And we're going to read the last three verses of this chapter, the first epistle of Peter, and um, verse 23 through 25, three verses, amen. If you don't have a Bible with you, we always have God's Word lit up at Ozark Full Gospel Church, amen. It says, being born again, not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. I want to use for a subject this morning the miracle of God's word. You may be seated. The miracle of God's word. You see, when you get into the word of God, then you're getting into the will and the plan of God. And then when the word of God gets in you, God gets inside of you and the will and the plan of God begins to be created in our life by the living power of the Word of God. To this day, the Word of God is pictured as a seed. And, you know, I'm always amazed you can take a little bitty seed and put it in the ground. A little water comes, a little nutrition from the Dust of the earth comes. And the next thing you know, you've got different types of vegetables and fruits, trees and so forth. It's amazing how God can put so much stuff in a little seed. He can pack in a great big oak tree in a little seed. He can pack in those great uh, redwoods in California in a little seed. He can take something so small and in that little package is released big things. And I want you to know the Word of God is powerful and it's full of seeds that will absolutely produce big things in your life. How I many would like to have some big things in your life? Amen? And so when the Word of God gets in us, then God's will and plan begins to be revealed in us. I have a very simple outline today uh, about God's Word being miracle, a miracle of God's Word. Now, anytime God makes something or creates something, it is a miracle. Everything God creates is a miracle. Now, when we create something, it's usually a mess. Or if we are proud of what we create, the Bible is very clear that Everything around us that's visible, that's tangible, will return to dust. It will deteriorate. This building that we're in right now, as beautiful as it is, probably won't be standing here hundreds of years from now. I hope it lasts a long time. But the truth is, everything on this earth is dissolving. It's going to fall away. It's going to fade away. But God's Word never fades away. God's Word is eternal, and His Word is powerful. Notice it says in verse 23 that we're born again, not by a corruptible seed, but by an incorruptible seed. You say, what is an incorruptible seed? Right here. 
This Bible is an incorruptible seed. And the Bible says, it is the Word of God which abideth forever. And I want to begin by saying that God creates an everlasting life. That's the first thing I want to bring, bring out today is that God creates an everlasting life. Let me rephrase that again so you don't miss this. God creates an everlasting person. I want to be one of them. How many want to be one of them everlasting persons? I want to be an everlasting child of God. I don't want to fade. I don't want to wear out. I don't, need, I don't want to be in something that needs batteries recharged. Someone might steal my battery. I, I, I mean, when you got the Word of God, no one's going to steal your battery because most people are running from the Word of God instead of running to it. But I'm thankful for the Word of God. God creates, first of all, an everlasting person. That everlasting person will never, ever cease to exist. Someone says, now, wait a minute, preacher. Um, Adam and Eve, when they first were created, they were created to last forever. Got some news for you. They're dead. They're dead. And so God says, I hate dead. God's saying, I hate dead. God says, I love life. So God says, I'm going to do away with dead because I'm not a dead God. And I'm going to create everlasting life that never ceases to exist. Hello. Come on, you might as well amen me because I'm going to preach all of it anyway. The Bible says being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, by the word of God is, that is forever. I want you to notice in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, it says, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The word of our God shall stand forever. Well, if you want to stand up forever, get this good word of God inside of you because this word of God stands forever. When Russia crumbles, when China crumbles, when Iran crumbles, when the nations of this world crumble, even when America crumbles, our God's word stands forever. In fact, Jesus Christ said of the end time in Matthew 24, verse 35, and also in Luke 21, verse 33, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away. Jesus Christ said, heaven and earth shall pass away. But he said, but my words shall not pass away. When he said the heaven and, heaven and the earth shall pass away, he meant that everything you see, everything you taste, everything you touch, everything you feel, everything around you is going to fade, die, crumble, pass away. But God's word will still be standing when everything else has fallen. God's word stands forever. God's word stands forever. No matter what the world does, God's word stands forever. God said it, it's done Finish, package deal, never to be changed. God said it, it's done. It's forever settled in heaven. And it's the incorruptible seed of God. I'm going to move right along because I want everybody to grasp this because notice it says, we read all three verses, 23, 24, and 25. 24 is pretty clear, grass uh, withers, flesh is as the grass the glory of man as the flower falls away. But the word of God endureth. Now in Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says the word of God standeth. In verse 25 of 1 Peter 1, it says the word of God endureth forever. In other words, enduring means that God's word will stand and it will never fade away. 
It will never, God's word will never deteriorate. God's word endure. No storm can remove it. No power can destroy it. No uh, object can hinder it. Nothing can stop the word of God. God says, I'm the king of kings, the Lord of lords. I've said it. It's done. It's settled in heaven. Woo! Praise the Lord. Not only does the word stand forever, but the word, the word endures forever. Never fades away. Never deteriorates. The second thing I want to point out is, well, let, let's establish this right now. God creates an everlasting person. Everybody say that, everlasting person. God creates an everlasting person. You say, well, wasn't Adam and Eve? They're, gone, they're, get, they're dead. So who's the candidate for an everlasting person? You and me. God's going to make an everlasting person out of you and I. Isn't that good? Never to deteriorate, never to fade, never to be destroyed, but to live forever. Eternal means forever. Everlasting means never wears out, never fades away, never deteriorates, never becomes weak, never loses sight, never loses the power of God in their life. We as children of God. Isn't that good? Heaven and earth shall pass away. When the stars fall from heaven, remember when I was preaching in uh, Amos and I said, I believe Orion, that cluster of stars, will be some of those stars that will fall during the great tribulation period. The, though, the, though the heavens fall, heaven and earth shall pass away. The sun blackens, the moon shatters, the atmosphere crumbles, stars fall. Everything is obliterated. Whether man does it out of ignorance or God does it out of his judgment and wrath, either way, God's word will still be standing when everything is melted down. Forever stands. So I want to know how God is going to make me an everlasting person. And we begin by being born again. We begin by having the seed of God planted in us. I don't know how to explain it. You take a little old bitty seed. When I was growing up, dad would tell me to plant a row of seed and I always put too many seeds in the ground because I'd look at that seed and say, there ain't no way there's a stalk of corn here. I'd take that little kernel of corn, look at it and say, you, sir, no way is there five, six ears of corn in you. I'd look at a little turnip seed and I'd say, no way that you can taste so good in the fall of the year. I lost some of you right there, you bunch of turnip heads. You look at a tree and it's a small seed. But we need to remember when God puts in his seed this is not an earthly seed we're talking about. This is an everlasting seed. We're talking about the big seed. His name is Jesus Christ. And when God puts the big seed in us, his name is Jesus Christ. God follows it with little seeds of his word, and it becomes a cluster, and we become a vineyard. We become an orchard. We become a massive, fruitful uh, place for God Almighty, the seed does great things in our life. Amen. So God creates first an everlasting person. Number two, God creates a Word of God baby. You want to hear something profound? Well, you have to go to some other church. You can't get it here. But anyway, <laughs> but you want to hear something pro pro profound? Everyone in God's kingdom must start out as a baby. Bottom line, we're not going to be like Adam and Eve. They didn't start out as babies. Adam started out as a full-grown guy out of the dust of the earth. Adam died. Eve started out full-grown, gorgeous, beautiful woman, but she died. She got Adam killed. 
I'm teasing. Somebody didn't catch that, and I'm glad you didn't. When I want you to really listen good, you don't hear, and then when I want you not to hear it, and, and I did pretty good this time, but God creates a Word of God baby. We could call this a Word baby. A Word baby. Remember I said nobody gets into the kingdom of God without first being a baby. You didn't get into this world without first being a baby. And you won't get into the kingdom of heaven without first being a baby. A word baby. A word of God baby. Where God plants his word, his seed in our life, and we become a word baby. Isn't that beautiful? Romans 1, 6 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. God uses his gospel, his word, his son, to bring sons and daughters into his kingdom. But they all have to come the way of the gospel cradle. The cradle. They have to become, come through as a baby. I love this James chapter 1 verse 18. Of his own will, God's will, of his own will, God's will, of his own will, beget he us with the word of truth. God born us again with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. Isn't that awesome? First fruits of his creature. We'll be coming back to that in just a little bit toward the end. First fruits of his creatures. We'll, everybody say creatures. We'll be coming back to that in just a little bit. But God uses his word to bring people to himself. They asked the Puritans way back long ago, they said, if you could choose one hour, just one hour in a day to either read the scriptures for one hour or hear the preaching of God's word for one hour, which one would you choose? And the Puritans hands down said we would choose the preaching of God's word because the sower soweth the word. When God sent his son, God only had one son. God only had one only begotten son. Only one. And God did not make him, uh, uh, God didn't make him a, um, a writer, though he's the word of God. God didn't make him a, a uh, farmer, though he could, he masters all the crops. God didn't make him a, Artists, although he canvasses the world and the universe with beauty. God had only one begotten son, and he did not choose to make him a plumber, a writer, a musician, a singer. You say, but wait a minute, wait a minute, preacher. He was a carpenter. That's before God the Father gave him his commission to go. That was, he followed Joseph, but when he followed God, his father, he was not called into the carpenter ministry. He followed his father as a carpenter, Joseph, but when he came to his father in heaven, his father, God said, no, you're not going to be a carpenter. You're not going to be um, a writer. You're not going to be a performer. You're not going to be a lawyer. God had only one begotten, only begotten son, and God made him a preacher. God so loved the world that he made him a sacrifice, a teacher, a preacher, but everything that we receive, we receive by 
Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And so it is by the word of God that we are brought to God. By him, by his own will beget us by the word of truth. Turn the TV off. You're not going to get the word of truth there. Unless you're watching my television program. Thought I'd throw that in. I always get tripped up in the fishing line, you know. But God creates a word of God baby. In other words, everybody has to start out at the same place. A newborn. No one is born a theologian. No one is born, by the way, angels were not born, angels were created. We're born, and then we're going to be created as new creatures in Christ. So we're not only going to be born of incorruptible seed, we're going to be created as a new creature by the Word, the Spirit, the power of God. Woo! Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to come to the profound, most, you know, incredible, amazing statement. God creates a hungry baby. I said God creates a hungry baby. Matthew 4, 4 and Luke 4, 4, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. One thing, when God creates a word of God baby, that baby is absolutely dependent upon the nourishment and the sincere milk of the Word of God. When you bring that newborn baby home, that newborn baby could care less whether you have it in a bassinet, on a bed, wrapped in a blanket, or pretty clothes. That baby is interested in one thing and one thing only. Where's the milk? And if I don't get the milk, Babies are incredibly beautiful, except for their incredible, annoying cry. But a baby will cry and cry and cry and cry to get the milk. So you got Bible for that? Sure do. Just go to chapter 2, same book, 1 Peter. Verse 2, 2-2, two, two, as newborn babes desire the sensual milk of what? The word that you may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is delicious, gracious. Hello. Oh, I read that wrong, didn't I? Well, I think it means delicious too. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is delicious. Something about a baby. Babies are not interested in the car you drive. They're not interested in the house they live in. Babies are not interested in what you put on them. Oh, don't the baby look cute in its pretty little dress? His, it's her pretty little dress. Don't the baby look so cute? That baby could care less about that cute dress, that little girl, that little baby girl could care less. That little baby girl is not, you, you're the one that likes the pretty dress. The little baby girl really doesn't care. You put pretty little shoes on a little girl or, or shoes on a little boy, baby boy, and you think all oh, them shoes are so awesome and so, they look so cute in them, but that little boy and that little girl could care less whether they're barefooted, whether they have shoes on. They don't care whether there's mud between their toes or, or whether they've got clean feet or dirty feet or whether they're laying in, in, in a diaper or they're start naked. They're concerned about one thing, that is milk. Feed me. Hello. And when God creates you and you become a newborn baby in Christ, the one consuming desire of your life is feed me. Until you find yourself sitting in a place you don't want to sit, it's called a mess. And you're saying, clean me. Hello. Hello. So the first thing that babies do is feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. And then after they get fed a while, it's clean me, clean me, clean me, clean me. 
I don't care what kind of dress or what kind of clothes you put on me. I don't care what you drive and I don't care what bassinet you put me in. I could care less. I just want to be fed. I need the sincere milk of the word because in that sincere milk of the word is antibodies that will keep me from the wicked one. In that, anti, uh, 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 in that sincere milk of the word is antibodies that keeps me healthy and keeps the devil off my back, gives me strength and nourishes me so I can become a child a, a, a mature child of God. Yes. The doctors told me, said, you need to get off whole milk. It'd be better if you got 2%. Even better get 1%. I went and got a jar of 1%, drank it, went to the faucet, got me some water, drank it, and couldn't tell the difference. So the doctor says, not too much milk. He says, it's going to, you know, it can mess with your heart. And I said, Doc, I've yet to see too many cows fall over dead in the pasture with a heart attack. <laughs> he said, well, they don't eat meat. And I said, well, that may be true, but I eat them. <laughs> he said, that's another thing, preacher. Quit eating so much red meat. I said, stay out of my life. I'm going to tell you what the people tell me. Don't preach to me. <laughs> and so I compromised. I decided that we would get soy milk. Soy milk. Now, my wife can't drink soy milk, but she drinks almond milk. I've discovered no matter how much you crush and pound and scrape and grind and pound them nuts to get milk. It's not going to taste good. Eat the nuts. Enjoy the nuts. So the only real nourishment as newborn babes in Christ we can get, we have to get it from the utter of God's word. You say, what is an utter? If you're that stupid, you probably won't make it through the rest of the sermon. <laughs> God creates a baby. The baby cries because the baby wants to eat. The baby begins to grow, begins to see shiny objects, begins to see things, a fan in the ceiling, a, a, a necklace or a silver necklace on their mother. The baby begins to see things. The baby begins to, begins to look at things. And, and when the baby's wanting to taste things, you've got to watch them because they'll swallow a quarter. They'll swallow. Which one was it? Gunner that swallowed the, what did you swallow? A penny or a quarter? Penny. And uh, they finally went in and surgically removed it. And he come out of the anesthesia and he said, I swallowed the penny, and he did swallow it. You got to watch babies because they'll grab things that will harm them. But if you get yourself full of God's word, you'll learn what to not grab. You'll learn to what you'll learn what is good in your mouth and what isn't. Charity's running off my illustration, little Raylan. How old is Raylan? She's a few months old. She. How old is Raylan? Somebody give me. How many? Seven months. Raylan, seven months. And she didn't really, you know, yield too much to the different foods because she wasn't really fond of it. She, she wanted to drink the essential milk of mama. And we were over at El Charles' birthday meal, Joshua's birthday, and we're having a meal and Little Jojo's there. And Jojo hadn't been eating much because Jojo was addicted to milk. And so little Judy, my youngest daughter, went and got Joshua a, what do they call that? A cheesecake. A cheesecake. And Joshua likes cheesecake. 
And uh, how many like cheesecake? Ain't got a thing to do with the sermon, but God bless you. <laughs> and uh, so we decided we had let little Jojo taste some cheesecake. Mm, my goodness. Grandma takes a little cheesecake, puts it on little Jojo's lip, and she gets in, and boy, it was on. Mouth opens wide. <laughs> Grandma gets another piece of cheesecake. Mouth opens wide. Just like a little nest of baby birds. It's one stirring from the cheesecake and uh, open wide. And she tasted and seen that cheesecake was good. In verse 3 of <laughs> second chapter of First Peter. If so, ye have tasted that the Lord is delicious. He's gracious. And so God doesn't want us to continue to just cry and squall for sensual milk of the word. But we need to remember that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. As much as I like homemade bread... The more I eat of it, the probably closer to the grave I get. But I like homemade bread. How many like homemade bread? I love it. Amen. My wife, she doesn't do homemade bread this, because, this way because if she did homemade bread this way, I would be angry forever. But she'd take a little slice of white bread and she'd lay it in a plate after a meal and she would take peas you know, the vegetable, peas. And she'd dip out peas with pea soup. And she'd pour it over the slice of bread. And she'd eat that. And I think, who eats pea soup bread? Does anybody else in here eat pea soup bread? We've got four crazy people in this auditorium. I can't even stand the thoughts of it. And I'm the man that likes boiled okra. But God creates a hungry baby. One of the signs that you have been born again, one of the sure fire signs that God has born you again and saved you, that God has chosen you by his own will beget you, by God's will. God's will, he saved you. He, he give you eternal life so that you could become a creature of God. You could grow into a creature. And he begins you as a baby. The reason he begins you as a baby is because you would be too distracted as a middle-aged person. The reason God starts us all out as a baby is because you, you would be too distracted to get what you need, the nourishment and the antibodies you need from the gospel of Christ. He has to start you out as a baby so that you're not all wrapped up in cars and houses and clothes and, and money and things and trinkets. He has to start you out as a baby in Christ. And when he starts you out as a baby, baby in Christ, nothing, 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 Nothing matters but the milk. Nothing, nothing, nothing matters but the sincere milk of the Word of God. And when you get that Word of God and you grow in that Word of God, it makes strong uh, gospel bones inside of you. It makes strong uh, strength inside of you. It, it makes you what you need to be. And someone, someone asked one time, why do the old timers live so much longer than some of the new timers coming along? Let me give you one good well, there's about three good reasons, but the, one of the good reasons is the old timers were all breastfed. Hello. Now, if you think that doesn't matter, then you think almond milk is good <laughs> and soy milk is good. Another reason the old timers lived so much longer is because they obeyed their parents. They honored and obeyed their parents. That love and respect to their parents and love for their country. Hello. And the other reason they lived so long is because they were not consumed with the world. They were involved in this. 
the Word of God. And so God chooses you to start out as a little baby so that, you know, the baby looks at, the baby's crying. The baby's hungry. Wah! And men, they just cry. Some babies have that high-pitched cry. Wah! And other babies have that low-pitched. Oh. I know I sound like a sea whale there. But anyway, excuse me. Hello. You say, well, I love to hear you preach only because I act stupid sometimes. God created a hungry baby. God always creates a hungry baby. And one of the full, one of the sure signs that you've truly passed from death unto life, one of the sure signs that you're a child of God, you will be absolutely enamored, consumed for the sincere milk of the Word. If you don't have a craving for the Word, you don't have God. If you don't have a desire and a hunger for the Word of God, you don't have God. If you don't have a, a deep hunger to learn the Word of God, you don't have God. Listen, I don't study the Bible so much so I can preach. I study the Bible because I want to know what the book says. I still love the Word of God. It is food to my soul, substance to my spirit. It is the Word of God that abides forever. It stands when everything else falls. It endures when everything else crumbles. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall never, never pass away. Amen. And so that baby, when that baby's crying, that baby is interested in the milk. If you don't believe that, just, you know, you know, babies want milk so bad that you go invest hundreds of dollars in pacifiers just to get them to shut up. Whoever invented the pacifier was ingenious, was a genius. But you know why that baby's crying? That baby's like, feed me. You say, well, the baby will be as big as a barn. The, hey, it's okay to be as big as a gospel barn when you're a gospel baby. It's okay to, it's okay to become a giant when you're a gospel baby, amen? amen. Hello? You be consumed with the Word of God. You desire the Word of God. When that little baby looks up at his mama, that baby really doesn't care what mama looks like, doesn't care about her hair, doesn't care about what uh, she's wearing. That little baby doesn't care about the color of her eyes. Oh, that baby knows her mama because that baby has laid under the heartbeat of her mama for nine months. Oh, yeah, that baby knows her mama. That baby's bonded to her mama. Oh, absolutely. But you remember this. That baby, when it looks at the face of their mama, mama's just had her hair done. That baby's not impressed. That baby could care less whether mama's pretty or mama's ugly. That baby doesn't care. That baby is feed me. All consumed with being fed. When that baby looks up at daddy, that baby could care less what daddy looks like. And I, I, will, I will say quickly that the mama's got the daddy beat, obviously. You can look at Judy and tell that. Everybody's got quiet in here. What's the deal? Listen, if you don't start responding better, I'm going to charge you a dentist rate. <laughs> it's like you're in a dentist waiting room. I'll charge you a dentist rate. Amen. And if you keep acting that way, I'm going to drill, uh, drill down inside of you. Uh, like what they call them root canals. I'll do that root canal on you. But God creates a hungry baby. And creating that hungry baby is for one purpose and one purpose alone. A sign that you are a child of God and the other is that you will become the sons and daughters of God. You will mature into a creature that God has created. So first, God creates everlasting life or an everlasting person. He does it through the Word. Second, God creates a word baby, a word of God baby. Third, God creates a hungry baby. Wah! Feed me. Listen, you know, I love, I love coming to church and I love good music and I love, 
I love shaking hands with folks and I, I love worshiping God and I love getting involved with God, but feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. I need God's word, feed me. And then God changes his word in our lives from milk to meat. We have honey for dessert. The word of God is honey. The word of God is water. We have the word of God for survival. We have milk for stability and growth. We have honey for dessert. We have meat for strong, mature growth. And then we have God's promise that this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Now, the last point I want to bring out today is God creates a new creature. We mentioned this last Sunday morning, but I, you know, I, I, I ran around the building and missed one of the corners. I missed one of the bases, and I'm glad the umpire didn't call me out. But anyway, God creates a new creature. And if you haven't discovered this by now, every baby grows up to be a creature, different from the other. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What becomes new? Our Father becomes new. We receive our Father God. What becomes new? Our spirit becomes new. What becomes new? Our heart becomes new. What becomes new? Our appetite becomes new. What becomes new? Our, our fellowship, our family becomes new. What becomes new? Our ways become new. What, what becomes new? Our, our desires and our wishes and our dreams become new. What becomes new? Our future becomes new. What becomes new? Everything becomes new. All things, old things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. We become creatures. Remember last Sunday morning, I said there's a difference between creation and creature. The creation is the sky, the moon, the stars, the planet. Everything around us is a creation, the masterpiece of the creator. But when you get to talking about creatures, you look at the elephant as a creature. The rhinoceros is a creature. Fried chicken is a creature. Giraffe is a creature. And so God says, I'm going to make a creature that's apart from Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve didn't start out a baby. Adam and Eve started out full of age. So I'm going to start out a baby. And that baby is going to grow into a new creature. And I'm going to create something that has never been before. I'm going to create something. I'm going to create, God says, I'm going to create something that is not like Adam and Eve. So I hear preachers say, well, we'll be like Adam and Eve. No, we won't. Adam and Eve died. We're going to be like Jesus Christ, the last Adam. And here it is. We start out as a baby. And we grow. And we grow. And we grow. And God is making us. His masterpiece. The Bible says we are His workmanship, created unto good works, that God makes us what we should be so that we would become the creature of God. Let's go back to James chapter 1, verse 18, and we'll be done. Of His, that's God, of God's own will, but say God's will, that's not your will, that's God's will. Of his own will beget, or he, begorn, he uh, reborn us. We became new in Christ, reborn, born again. He, begorn, he, he, he reborns us, we're reborn again with the word of truth. With the word of truth. That we should be a kind, Numbered of all, numbered around, numbered of, uh, numbered of the angels, numbered of the animals, numbered of the creatures that we would become a kind that's different of the first fruits of his creatures. 
We're going to be, we are going to be as child, children of God, we are going to be something that is far, far more impressive than the angel, angels in heaven. Amen? Amen? We are going to be set apart. In fact, all the universe, out of all the universe, out of all of God's creation, out of all the solar systems, out of all the quasars, out of all the animals, out of all the angels, out of all the myriads of things that God created, you and I, born as a small seed, you and I, born as a baby, ingesting the Word of God, growing in the things of God, purchased by the blood of God, purchased by the Spirit of God, redeemed by the Spirit of God, permeated by the Spirit of God, breathed upon by the breath of God, changed by the power of God, redeemed by the power of God, led by the power of God, instilled and fed through the Word of God, being blessed by the power of God's Word, the miracle power of God's Word, will grow up and become exactly in His image, will become in His likeness. God has a plan, and that plan is we step over on the other shore just like Jesus Christ. God has a plan because Jesus died, shed His blood, went to the tomb, rose again from the grave. God has a plan that when we see Jesus Christ, we, won't, we don't know what we shall be, but when we see Him, we shall be like Him. And how many of you would agree him, Jesus, is the most amazing, most beautiful, most incredible person in all the universe? Yeah. And we are going to be just like him. So we become the first fruits of his creatures. Amen? Yeah. When the angels see us pass by, they'll say, there goes one. Hey, hey there's one of them. There's, there. Oh, I thought that was Jesus. Oh, oh, they look so much alike. They look like twins. They're amazing. And one of the angels would say to the other angel, you know how to tell them apart. And one angel that's dumber than the other one says, I'll tell you how to tell them apart. The real, genuine, bona fide, only begotten Son of God Almighty has nail prints in his hand and a pierced side and nail pierced feet. He is the eternal, pre existent, sovereign God of the universe. Wow. So next time someone says, well, you know, they went to be with the Lord. They're as the angels. No, sir. We're going to blow by them angels like a rocket. Them angels in comparison to our beauty, in comparison to our majesty and, and, and beauty in Christ, them angels are just, I mean, they're just, they're just peas and soup on a loaf of bread. Slice of bread. Hello. But until then, feed me. Until then, uh, there's some cheesecake over there in John 3.16. Would you pass that over here? It tastes really good. There's some dessert. Oh, boy, there's some banana pudding over there in Romans 8.28. Just bring it over here. You say, why do you use Romans 8.28? You know, all things work together. Because when you eat banana pudding, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> Amen? Now, I'll tell you this right now. Sister Goldie can make some of the most amazing banana bread. She puts nuts in it. She brings it to me. I am so blessed. Actually, she brings it to Judy. I steal it. Lord, forgive me. 
And I thought, boy, that banana bread is awesome. I love it. Now, there's one thing I detest out of anything on this universe is a overripe banana. I do not like rotten, overripe bananas. I, I want bananas that have a crunch. But I was told that Goldie gets them really overripe bananas. And that's what she uses to make such good banana bread. I don't trust you anyway, but it's good. I love these miracles in the epistles. I love the fact that God's word, word can change any problem in our life. Don't spend all your time whining and complaining unless you're at the utter of God's word. And then you can cry because you need the nourishment of God's word. People that says, well, when, when, when things get straightened out, then I'll come to church. Wrong answer. Well, you know, when I get my ducks in a row, you'll never get your ducks in a row. Ducks are ducks. And who wants to own a bunch of ducks? Well, if I go to church, the roof will fall in. We've got insurance. I'll stand back from you. Well, you know, I, I'm going through this thing and I just don't feel like I need to be, you know, I'm going through something so I, I want to go home and I want to stay away from people and, 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 and listen, listen to me, if you're going through some horrific treatments for cancer or horrific treatments for surgery, I understand you staying home. You probably need to do that to, to get, get, get your strength and stay healthy. But I'm talking about when you get depressed, the last place you need to be is at home. When you're discouraged, the last place you need to be is at home. When you're going through something hard in your life, the last place you need to be is at home. Oh, taste the Lord and see. Oh, taste the Lord and see. He is delicious. He is gracious. Taste the Lord and see. Amen. 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 Little. Little Jojo, when she ate that cheesecake for the first time, and Judy would put a piece on her finger, and Jojo would reach up and grab Judy's hand and <laughs> pull it in. That's what you need to do with me when I'm preaching. Grab me and suck it in. I need this. Amen. Amen. Taste the Lord. Remember the first time you tasted forgiveness? How many remember the first time you tasted forgiveness? And, and you know, since I tasted forgiveness, I've been tasting it. I've been eating it. I've been consuming it. There's just some things that don't change. Forgiveness is wonderful. How many ever tasted forgiveness for the first time? They used to have an, a, a commercial for cornflakes. And how many know cornflakes needed, needed, needed trash can? But anyway... I grew up in cornflake. I grew up in cornflake fantasy. I grew up in cornflake veal. Mom always bought cornflakes. Why? Because it was the cheapest cereal she could buy. And then when we didn't have milk, we'd put water over it. And we, have, have you ever tried to eat cornflakes quick enough that they don't get soggy? You ever tried? You talk about fast food eating. Whoa. It gets soggy. I don't like soggy cereal. I like crunchy cereal. And remember, cornflakes needed a, they needed, they, they, they were bankrupt. They knew they was bankrupt. They knew that people were tired of them. And so an ingenious person said, let's have an, let's have an advertisement for cornflakes. And let's advertise, eat cornflakes. Taste them again for the first time. I did. I'm done. It still tastes as bad as the 50th time and the 100th time and the 1,000th time and the 10,000th time. Hello. But taste again God's forgiveness. 
and taste it again for the first time over and over and over again. Remember the first time you tasted God's mercy? Remember? Remember the first time you tasted God's love? He loves me. I know he loves me. Remember the first time you tasted God's word under the anointing? Remember the first time you tasted the revelation of God's word in your life, and it was real to you? Remember the first time you tasted the gospel of Jesus Christ? Remember the first time you, you tasted the spirit of God? You tasted the outpouring of God. You, 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 you consumed it, and when you taste it, you're going to be just like little Jojo, that little eight, nine-month-old baby. I can't keep track. I'm Papa. Forgive me. But anyway, the little baby. You know, a mother can know, and a dad, some dads, not, I'm not this dad, but some dads do, but mamas know, well, my baby is six months and one quarter old. My baby is seven months and three days old. Well, a man might remember that if he was the one bringing the baby into the world. Amen? Hello? And so we need to understand that God has to do, God has to start us out as a baby. A baby to receive forgiveness, a baby to receive mercy, a baby to receive the sincere milk of the word. God has to start us out as a baby, nourish us, make us strong, so that we can move on in the channels of age. And we don't age in grace, we grow in grace. If you age in grace, you're, you don't like church. If you age in grace, you, you're a really arrogant deacon. If you age in grace, you're, you're a bitter preacher. If you age in grace, you always find him fault with the sermon, always find him fault with the saying. If you age in grace, you say, what are you saying, preacher? You're a coot. That's what you are. You're an old coot. You're a gospel old coot. Say, what is a coot? Don't look around. But there's a couple of them probably in here. Maybe. Judy, I can hear the words of Judy. That's a good place to land. But some of my best preaching is when I'm on the soapbox. At least it is for me. I don't know about other people. But let's remember. Everybody starts out as a baby because God knows that you can only get what you need by being placed in a position where you're not distracted, where your all-consuming desire and hunger is feed me. That's the miracle of God's Word. Remember the seed? The seed is under the ground. I heard that about 4 o'clock this morning. But you know where the seed is? The seed is underground in the dark. No one can see what's happening. But underground in the dark is the manifestation of the seed and the upcoming of a harvest. And when you're born again, you're not underground, but you are as a baby. And you have a consuming desire for the sincere milk of the Word. The Word of God is powerful. The miracle of God's Word. Stand with me. We're going to give an invitation. We hope you enjoyed today. We, more than that, we hope that you receive today. You may be in this room right now saying, Preacher, I don't have the hunger for God's Word like I used to. Get it back. Because that same Word of God that changed your life is the same Word of God that's going to take you to the other side. God has made you an everlasting person. God produces an everlasting life. And He does it through His Word. He creates a baby a word baby, a Bible baby. He makes that baby incredibly hungry and he leads that baby into maturity to be manifested 
as the sons of God or a creature of God. Something that has never existed before. Something that is far greater than all the constellations, all the stars and the planets, all the creation. And God does it all. What you think maybe is a little seed. He brings the big seed, Jesus, into our heart. And those little seeds begin to come. And the next thing we know, we are being created a majestic creature. Let me say this. I believe the majestic creature you're going to be. I believe the majestic creature, as a child of God, the majestic creature you're going to be will be the all-conclusiveness of how much seed you intake of the Word of God. It will, all, it will ultimately be uh, measured by the seed of God that you take in. And the more you take in, the more glorious Jesus Christ will make you. Isn't that beautiful? All is open. God's going to sing. Maybe you've lost your hunger for the Word. Maybe you lost your taste for the Word. This is your opportunity to do so.